Well, if you haven't heard already, Patrick Corbin has stated that he is excited for this upcoming season. Well, since he said that, now let's talk about if Patrick Corbin can bounce back into his potential Cy Young form, and we'll get into all of that right after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Ryan Clary, and I have taken my passion for baseball and the Nats and have taken it with the Locked On Podcast Network where you get your team every single day for any sport you choose to pick. That's why we love it here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And guys, let's get right into it because Patrick Corbin has kind of caused a little uh, turmoil, you could say, over the last three seasons. As back in 2019, Patrick Corbin was one of the Game 7 heroes to win the 2019 World Series for the Nationals, came in relief, and dominated. Also, let's not even forget, he finished 11th in the Cy Young Award race in that season, and he was one of the best, if not the best, left-handed pitcher in all of baseball, looking back on it in that season. But he made some comments, you could say, when asked about in the media scrum just yesterday, and he stated that, I'm as excited as I've ever been heading into a season, and boy, oh boy, did that ruffle some feathers within the Nationals Fans, you could say, not the media, but the fans, because, you know, Patrick Corbin has been one of the worst, if not the worst, starting pitcher in baseball since the beginning of the COVID season in 2020. And let's preface it by saying this. Can Patrick Corbin have a bounce back season? And when I mean bounce back, I'm not going to be expecting a Cy Young season from Patrick Corbin let alone a sub-4 ERA. Can he get to the MLB average of around a 4-3 ERA? That is the question today. Can he get back to just being average? Because if you get an average Patrick Corbin, that does actually help this pitching staff in a big way. And let me say it by this. Starting pitching is about comfortability. And if you look back at 2019 with Patrick Corbin, he caught, or he didn't caught, but Jan Gomes caught him in every single start in that regular season. And that is why I preface it by saying this. Last year, Kiber Ruiz, as I've said, as I've loved Kiber Ruiz, he has been a great portion to the Nationals' success, or he's trying to help them with their success, I should say. But Patrick Corbin, it's about comfort, especially when you have someone who's going to be throwing sliders in the dirt like Corbin is, whether it be a curveball or a changeup or his fastball that he likes to dip low and away that you see from time to time. Pitching is about comfort. And so I say this by just looking at his 2019 numbers when he just had Jan Gomes. This This were the numbers against him for batting. Uh, purposes back in 2019 a 227 batting average with a 293 on base percentage that was good for a 668 on base plus slugging fast forward to 2022 and this is what he had with Kiba Ruiz as catcher he had a whopping 362 batting average a 412 on base percentage with a 554 slugging percentage that had a 959 on base plus slugging. Now, this isn't to say that we're blaming Kibert Ruiz for his six, for his struggles for Patrick Corbin. That's not what we're saying because that's not what it is. Patrick Corbin has obviously lost some faith in his slider, in his stuff, in his fastball in particular, because you see balls that are leaving the yard that we have never seen before with Patrick Corbin. 
just by looking at it, he led the major leagues in hits given up this past season. He led the major leagues in earned runs given up this past season. And if you know Patrick Corbin, as I stated back in 2019, he had that one catcher, and that was Yon Gomes. Now, let's look at it this way. Back in 2022, he had three different catchers catch him during that year. He had 13 games with Riley Adams, five games with Tres Pereira, and then 13 games with Key Bear Ruiz. Obviously, the Nationals are going to want Ruiz to be back there when Patrick Corbin is pitching. They have a lot of future assets in Key Bear Ruiz. He was part of that Max Scherzer, Trey Turner deal, and they value what he brings to the table as they should. But when you look at it like this, Riley Adams, who I haven't given away the splits for when Patrick Corbin is pitching, these are what the numbers indicate of what Patrick Corbin is. He has a 259 batting average, a 313 on base percentage, and a 441 slugging percentage with a 755 on base plus slugging with Riley Adams behind the dish. And I say that not to say that this is the issue, that the catching situation is something to where it's like, well, maybe he just feels more comfortable with Riley Adams. It may be the reason why, but also is probably not. Because Patrick Corbin, if you look at his numbers overall, what has been the overarching theme with Corbin the last three years? Well, his strikeouts are down. His hits are up. His earned runs are up. Everything is up from him since that 2019 season. So what happened between then and there to where we get to here, where it's like he is the worst starting pitcher in all of baseball the last three years? Where did we get there? How did we get to this point? And now, looking at it, since we're already here, how can we improve on this stature moving forward? Well, there's a few reasons that I think that Patrick Corbin can bounce back, but then there's also a few to where he can't bounce back. Let's start with the negative first. Patrick Corbin's going to have to eventually get back to his numbers where he was striking out left-handed batters left and right because this is something to where I look at, and when you're a lefty, those left-handed batters are going to be have to get outs. Those are not your guaranteed outs, but your numbers will have to indicate that you can get those batters out. That is the standard. A right-handed pitcher is going to fare out better with a right-handed batter. A left-handed pitcher is going to fare out better with a left-handed batter. That's how it works. So Patrick Corbin, in that time this past season, in 2022, with left-handed batters, he was not good yet again. And that is part of the reason why we sit here today and ask, well, what the hell happened then? Because last year against left-handed batters, he had a 321 batting average, a 375 on base percentage, a 464 slugging. That was good for an 839 OPS. You look at right-handed batters. He had a 320 batting average with the 373 OBP. That was good for an 899 on base plus slugging. Well, He's going to have to start capitalizing on finding out a way to get the left-handed batters out once again because that's been his main struggle, in my opinion. I look at Corbin, and his stuff, his slider is still solid. It's not like a bad pitch, but it's definitely not the same for what it used to be because looking at the 2019 stats going against lefties, he had a 190 batting average, a 508 508 on base percent or on on base plus slugging rather those are very very good numbers against left-handed pitchers he's going to have to have faith in that slider to to get back to what he should be now with all that being said here are the things that Patrick Corbin can't control that have gone out of control the last few years and that is is his fielding independent pitching And if you don't know what fielding independent pitching is, it basically takes away the fielding of what, you know, defense is, and it singles it out into what pitchers can control. His fielding independent pitching this past season 
wasn't all that bad. It was a 4-8-3. Now, what does that mean? It means that the fielding that he got behind him wasn't that good. And we knew that as Nats fans. You saw the defense get a lot better once you traded for guys like C.J. Abrams and moved Luis Garcia over to second base. They're more natural positions. So now we sit here, and Patrick Corbin actually had decent-ish fielding behind him this past season, but it's going to get better. So if better fielding equals better outcomes for Patrick Corbin, I think that will play a big role in him kind of taking that next step and getting back to his old self. Now, will he get back to his old self, which was the question of this topic, and I'm going to get to that right here. I don't believe we will see the 2019 Patrick Corbin here in Washington, D.C. I've seen three years of this. He's been healthy, and honestly, that's a great thing that he's been healthy. That is one of the best things you could say for a starting pitcher. But then again, all these numbers to where I can't sit here and say, this is why he's not doing it. That is why he's not doing it. I'm not a coach. I'm not a GM. But what I can do is look at the spreadsheets from when he was good and when he was bad. And it's a clear difference between getting left-handed batters out and his strikeouts to where I come to the conclusion that he's just not as confident in his stuff as he once was. So to get Patrick Corbin back to his true self, it's probably not going to happen. But that doesn't mean he can't improve. Because truly, he only can improve going forward. So right now, I do expect Corbin to take a next step up. But that doesn't mean he's going to be a good or average starting pitcher. It just means he's not going to be the worst starting pitcher in baseball. And I say that, it sounds sad. I don't want to be negative. It's spring training. This is the time to be optimistic. But truly, looking at Corbin's numbers the last three years, just saying that he won't be a bottom-tier starting pitcher is truly optimistic. And that is the sad, unfortunate truth of it. But before that, we have to get to our mailbag. It is Monday. And plus, I got some answers. I got some answers to your questions that we're going to get into after this. But before, I got to tell you guys about my friends at FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is a perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Guys, it's the all-star break right now. But once basketball gets started up, I'm going to be looking at the Wizards. Whoever the Wizards are playing, I'm taking the other team to win. That easy. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your first sweat First bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. And now we get into our mailbag portion of this episode because there are a lot of big glaring questions for the Nationals heading into spring training. But before that, there is even more to look at than just the big prospects. It's the big picture here with the Nationals. The big picture, we're going to start with C.J. Abrams. Amongst current Nats on the roster, who has the biggest upside to take a big jump in 2023? My answer to that, C.J. Abrams. I have beaten the drum on extending C.J. Abrams all this offseason. With the ownership questions, was that likely? No, we knew that. Just with the ownership, they're not going to want to inherit all that money if they aren't even sure they're going to be owning this team in a year from now. So, besides that, I do think C.J. Abrams will take that next step that we're looking for. He's not going to be an all-star this year. That's not the expectation for him. But, Looking at his defense, his defense is a solid all-around tool for him. He is a complete defender in my mind, besides some errant throws here and there. 
that's going to happen when you have a 21, 21-year-old playing shortstop in the major leagues. I look at C.J. Abrams. Maybe he won't have all the power that we want. Maybe he's not going to get all the extra base hits that we will think he can get. But if he can get on base, if he can start generating walks and start cutting down on the strikeouts, you're going to see a much better and much more productive version of C.J. Abrams that we were promised to be getting from him. But then again, 22 years old, the time is not now. He doesn't need to show us everything right this second. You don't need to rush this process along for him. He should be starting all 162 games if he's healthy. So let's hopefully see that from him this year. Now, who will be the biggest surprise for the Nationals in 2023? And that is young second baseman Luis Garcia. Why, you may ask? Well, just from looking at everything, taking everything in, Luis Garcia is a solid player. He's not a special defender. He's not special at the plate, but he's good at pretty much everything that he does. And I think that is a solid trait to have. He's a solid second baseman. He is a solid hitter. Now, where I think he will take the biggest step up is from the plate. Luis Garcia does have some power in him. You've seen him go to the opposite field more and more as the seasons have gone on these past years. Now, when you look at Garcia, he's bulked up a little bit. He's even gotten a little bigger. It seems to me that he has worked on getting the ball out to left and right field back where that's where he really needs the issues for. Taking a curveball, putting it into the opposite field. That's what we need to see from Luis Garcia. Simple mechanics as to that. And I think a full offseason of work coming into opening day here, he's going to have a solidified starting spot, and that's where he will thrive, I think. So with Luis Garcia, is he going to be an all-star? No, but he's going to be a major league hitter. That is my projection for him this year. And some people are like, a major league hitter? We're in the major leagues. Well, guys, when you have lower odds the way that the Nats do this year in order to win, you're going to see major league hitting in general is going to be a little hard to find. So we'll answer that by that. Who will be the biggest disappointment in 2023? I'm going to start by saying it. It's going to be Trevor Williams, kind of the Nationals marquee, or he is the marquee signing of the Nationals offseason. I I have been banging this drum just like I have with C.J. Abrams. Trevor Williams is designed to be a fireman out of the bullpen. He is designed to be coming out of the pen when your starter blows up and he's going to eat three to four innings as a reliever, and that's what he does best. Or even in situations, you're going to want to open up the game with an opener. Maybe that opener is Patrick Corbin. Maybe it's someone out of the bullpen, Victor Arano, Paolo Espino. Who knows? Trevor Williams is best in that role. The Nationals plan to utilize him as a starter, which hasn't worked out in his career. Last year, where he found his success for the New York Mets was out of that bullpen situation or an opener. So the Nationals aren't planning, as the, at this time at least, to use him as a starter. Well, if you're going to use someone not to their strengths, you're probably not going to get a strong result as well. Maybe that's just the way that I look at it, but I prefer to use Trevor Williams in a role that he's going to be the most effective version of Trevor Williams. So I say that, and it's sad because he's supposed to be one of our better pitchers, but then again, we're not going to be using him to what he is great at. So that is the frustrating portion of it for me, but then again, who knows what they can do moving forward. But before we move on to our next big question with Josiah Gray, I'm going to start by thanking you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day. Now take a listen to Locked On MLB Prospects, hosted by Lindsey Crosby, who is the prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow, and it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So now, The big question for Josiah Gray that I have, 
is will Josiah Gray have a new and improved fastball? And I say this because this is the whole problem with Josiah Gray. He's got the stuff to be a major leaguer. But what he doesn't have yet so far in the major leagues is his fastball. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know Josiah Gray gave up the most home runs in all of baseball this last year. Well, 24 of those 38 home runs given up last year were on his fastball. And you see his fastball, he likes to hang it up high. That's where he misses, and that is the ultimate worst place to miss is a high fastball. If Josiah Gray can get back to what got him in the position to be traded for someone like Max Scherzer and uh, Trey Turner, because that's what got him here. His fastball was one of the better pitches in the Dodger system when they traded him to the Nationals. That's what we thought, and that's what it is, but he just hasn't been able to establish that yet. And he has mentioned, and I read Andrew Golden's uh, article on this yesterday in the Washington Post, is that he worked all offseason on some mechanics to try to fix those things. He worked on a lot of hip movement to try to get better footwork in that (laughs) pitching off the mound. So with all that being said, I do believe Josiah Gray will have a new and improved fastball in order to cut down on those home runs. And all, just looking at it from a whole, is to cut down on those big misses up and in in the zone and that's where he'll see the most damage done but before I get to the last two questions that I believe could be the two big questions for this season with the Nationals is what prospects can we see come up and make a big difference in 2023 because you will see a couple of prospects come up this year that could be on the run for the Washington Nationals moving forward. But before that, I got to tell you guys about my friends from Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me when you, where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously. They're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. And guys, you can thank me later. And now to get back to our final two questions for this mailbag session, and these are the two big ones that I want to answer, and this is one that I believe will be the biggest answer slash concern slash question for the Nationals this year, and it is this. Which prospect not on the 40-man roster will have the biggest impact in 2023? No doubt in my mind, that is Cole Henry, the 23-year-old second-round pick out of LSU in 2020 coming in to make a big difference in 2023. And here's why. Well, we know I discussed this the other day as he is recovering from thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. Now he has been on the right tracks. And as I disclosed the other day, there are pitchers who have come back from this injury. Steven Strasburg is just not one of those for now, but Cole Henry, 23 years old, a young gun, And really, when you look at his stats, he has been by far the Nationals' number one pitcher in the system over the last two years in only limited time. Cole Henry has the fastball. He's got the curveball. He's got the changeup. He's got the command. What does all that say? He's got the strikeouts as well. This is a put-away pitcher, someone who could, ceiling-wise, 
be a solid number two pitcher on a good baseball team. And I say that he probably would have been a first round pick in that 2020 draft, but he wasn't because of the issues that he's had over the years with his arm. If this is someone who can stay healthy, then this is a front of the line starting pitcher who has the ability to rack up strikeout numbers and to truly put away any hitter in the bigs. Now this all comes from saying he's got to stay healthy, which so far in two years hasn't really been able to show that to us. But heading into 2023, he is expected to be healthy, one, and two, he feels that he has been the strongest that he has ever been. So with that being said, I would expect Cole Henry to some at some point this year make an appearance in the major leagues. And when he does, I think he's going to blow away some Nationals fans and the ex- expectations that he has will be even further increased. Now for the last question. Will the Nats be better than 2022? This is an easy yes for me. An easy one. I think the Nationals have to be better. I think 2022 was rock bottom. Not only for the fact that we're the worst team in baseball, but also we traded away Juan Soto. You traded away Josh Bell. Those are two big names here in Washington, D.C., especially number 22, Juan Soto. So, yes, I think the Nationals will be better because you have a young core nucleus that is starting to take shape with C.J. Abrams, Luis Garcia, Mackenzie Gore, Cade Cavalli, Josiah Gray, Kiber Ruiz. All these guys will get better. If not all, mostly some of them will be better this season. And that is the exciting part of this Nationals team. Because you need young, talented players to ultimately step up and be better than what they were last year. And luckily for the Nats, I think they will be. So we won't be as bad in 2022 as we were in 2023. And I love the question because it was just a sad fan asking that said question in my DMs being like, hey man, can we be better than last year? Well, I think we will be to answer your question fair and square so thank you for making locked on nationals your first listen every day now make your second listen locked on MLB prospects hosted by lindsey crosby who was the prospect encyclopedia for the locked on podcast network and that pod is free and available wherever you get your podcast so thank you guys again for tuning in i will talk to you tomorrow as we will have some more spring training news that you won't want to miss and i have you covered each and every day with the Locked On Podcast Network. As I'm Ryan Clary, you just listen to Locked On Nationals Podcast.